Hey there, welcome to the uh, second video of the uh, Realistic DSP40 uh, digital signal processor unit that uh, you can buy used for anywhere from 20 to 40, 50 bucks on the uh, internet. First, we will see the uh, very, very cool narrow filters for CW listening. So if you like to listen to Morse code or digital mods, it can actually be really, really nice. And so let's put the little switch here into CW. I'll switch on the DSP unit. As you can see, it has this little light. Um, in CW, it is always on because it's a filter. Now, it narrows down. If I turn it off, you hear the CW signal. I'll turn it on, and now it's not there because it needs to be in the CW filter range. So we'll find a CW signal. And here we go. And what's even better is that you can narrow this down much more. So if I narrow medium or narrow it, I'll show you on the frequency display how narrow now it gets. So you'll see frequency and here it goes. There I don't hear it anymore. And there we don't hear it anymore. So you see it narrows down very very much the range where you can hear your signal, CW signal. And what's cool about that is that if there are too many CW signals close to one another, you'll be able to actually eliminate all the ones that are higher or lower in frequency because of the pitch. So this is really an audio filter here. And if I turn it off, here we go. And I can tune it with turn it off. CW signals are much more much more wide in frequency. So this is the first part for the CW signal, which is pretty cool. Now in single sideband, it has some filtering also. So I'll put it back into the wide position and we'll get ourselves a uh, single sideband signal. Maybe go in here a little bit better. Try to get a better signal to uh there we go. But this is no filtering. Uh, if you were up here for very long, you, you, you let's now turn it on into the CW filter SSB filter mode now. So we'll turn it on here. So I know. Thinking about that this morning. You can see the filtering going on with the blinking light. The blinking light here tells me there's some filtering on this SSB signal. So let's hear the signal with and without SSB first. Without. I've had it for, I don't know, about three years now. And I've got it running in parallel with the Kenwood. And, and with. It's a really nice band scope. So I, I'm. It does eliminate a little bit of noise. Concept. And of course, you can apply the filters. At least for receive. And it's working yeah. well. One has every bit as good as the receiver. And narrow. Using the narrow mode, if there's another SSB signal very close, you'll be able to actually eliminate it, which is nice. Okay, well, I can never keep up with you, Ken. You're, you're always going around the loop, and you seem to always go back from the, to the start. So this you is that twice already? SSB yeah, signals. There is something about chasing your, uh, your tail. As for the uh, noise reduction on it, let's turn it off again, put it in noise reduction mode. Let's go and get maybe a um, some shortwave signal somewhere. Let's uh, go into the 19 meter band here in the AM mode. Here we go. 
You've got a signal here. This is without filtering. And you can put on the filtering. As you can see here, it does eliminate some of the noise, but it does also degrade the signal. I don't find the noise reduction very, very nice on this radio. So I rarely use it on the uh, international broadcast bands because I don't find it that cool. But it's still worth trying. Maybe sometimes you can actually have an improved signal on this. But, um, and now I'll show you one of the cool features. It's that notch filtering that I'm talking to you about. Example, this is WWV and it has a tone. And now I'm going to put the DSP on and you're going to see that the notch filter will actually remove the WWV tone. As you can see, all you hear are the ticking of the clock. And if I turn it back off... So this is a really, really, really powerful notch filter and it's one of the best and it's automatic. So for example, I'll um, simulate a tone. I'll put it in sideman. Here we go. Now we have a tone. When to eliminate the tone, put it on. As you can see, it works well. If I move the tone in frequency on the radio, it's really, really powerful. If I remove it, you'll see the tone. Put it back. It's really an incredible notch filter. So in a situation where a signal has an pterodyne, so has one of those tones while you're listening to the program, well this is one of the best features I've seen on this little device. Really cool, uh, removes all tones and a set frequency range. And what's cool, it's automatic. Um, I remember on my R5000, my Kenwood R5000, I had a notch filter. It was, it was manual. You had to actually fine-tune the little button until you notch out the tone. And the problem with notching out the tone was it was extremely difficult to really be precise. So um, it did do the job, but it was difficult to tune out the tones. This one is automatic. It detects a tone, it removes it immediately. So it's pretty cool. As you can see on the WWV signal, it's fantastic at removing the tones. So, uh, this was a little shot of the uh, DSP unit and uh, hope that uh, gives you an idea how it works. And it works with the audio output of an e-radio. So, if you have a portable radio and want to add some filtering to it, well, I think this little box, especially for 30 or 40 dollars, is really really fun and interesting to have. Uh, it does need a 12 volt power input and it does not come with any power adapter so you'll have to uh, buy yourself if you don't have one a 12 volt uh, power supply to uh, give the power to this, uh, re this um, DSP unit. And um, I believe it comes with a uh, cigarette lighter cord because it can be mounted, um, uh, it has a bracket with it and it can be mounted in a, a car for example. So uh, this was uh, the using of the DSP-40. Hope you enjoyed this uh, look at an old little DSP. Also maybe it gave you uh, kind of a, 
an idea of what DSP can actually do for you and the more expensive the DSP units you have of course the more work it will actually do for you so uh, hey yeah this one's like 30 40 bucks but uh, look uh, if you have more money to spend you can look at some of the newer DSP units uh, I believe MFJ makes um, a few DSP units that are uh, uh, in the few hundred dollars range and that probably do even more um, than this receiver and of course you can also look at radios that include DSP uh, in the radio itself which is always uh, interesting so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, that you come back to the uh, official shortwave channel and thanks for watching 73